I'm Simon Lack with SL Advisors. We invest in midstream energy infrastructure. That's pipelines, storage and processing. We sit between the producers of oil and gas and the customers, which are often utilities, export terminals or refineries. We publish a blog twice a week on the energy sector and on interest rates because I spent much of my career in the bond market. In this video, I'm going to explain why natural gas has a great future and is a big part of the solution to reducing CO2 emissions. The Shell revolution unlocked enormous amounts of natural gas in America. It's hard to believe today, but a decade or more ago, it looked as if we were going to have to start importing liquefied natural gas or LNG from other countries because our domestic production wouldn't be able to keep up. But then the Shell revolution began, and as you can see, our proved reserves of natural gas more than doubled, and what's called technically recoverable reserves, which typically means they can be accessed at higher prices, has also moved up. Discovering all this natural gas has had several positive effects. For one, it's helped our trade balance by turning this into an exporter of natural gas. It's also helped make us energy independent, which means in aggregate we produce more energy than we use. Wouldn't Germany and the rest of Europe love to be in that position right now? But there's another positive aspect to our natural gas production that doesn't get much attention. It's brought our CO2 emissions down. Over the past decade in America, we've been steadily using less coal and more natural gas. Because coal produces around twice the CO2 emissions as natural gas for a given amount of power generation, the electricity we produce creates less CO2 than it used to. I think America has a great story to tell on CO2 emissions. America has reduced emissions more than anybody, and we've done that by using more natural gas and less coal. Renewables get lots of attention and they'll continue to grow, but the figures clearly show that the biggest source of reduced CO2 emissions in America is coal to gas switching. Solar and wind haven't had much impact because they're still pretty small, part of our energy mix. You'll hear climate extremists criticize our efforts on climate change. Yes, our emissions per capita are higher than almost any other country, but that's because we have a higher standard of living. The US economy is more productive. People generally work harder here than in other rich countries. China spent decades from the 1940s with a communist system which held back growth for generations. India did the same thing following independence from the British in 1947. They're both now catching up and argue that Western countries have already used up most of the world's capacity for extra CO2. But that's because we spent decades growing faster than them while they labored under centrally controlled economic models. That just doesn't sound like it's our fault. We shouldn't be apologizing. We should be working to get the rest of the world to achieve what we have. Emerging economies like China and India are generating much more CO2 than they used to. This is because they're focused on raising living standards. Rich countries are generally giving them a free pass to keep increasing their emissions so they can lift more of their citizens into the middle class. The problem is, that's why the world's emissions keep growing. Because China, India and others more than offset the good work done in America and the EU. Their increased emissions swamp any reductions we achieve. If you look at China's energy mix, you can see they use a lot more coal than we do. In fact, China is half of the world's coal consumption. They are raising living standards by using the worst possible form of energy. The answer is for China to shift its energy consumption to look more like ours. If they burned less coal and used more natural gas instead, they'd certainly grow their CO2 emissions more slowly. They might even go into reverse. Today, China is planning to use more natural gas, but they're planning to use more of everything because they're using more energy. As a natural gas investor, you have a call option on China, and other emerging economies deciding they're going to follow America's example and use more natural gas as a way to reduce emissions. In America, we've been burning much less coal over the past decade to produce electricity 
while using more natural gas. And our overall power generation has stayed fairly flat because of steady improvements in efficiency. Compare that with China, where they've been producing more electricity every year to support rising living standards and using dramatically more coal. The opportunity for US policymakers is to encourage China, India, and others to do just that. It can be an effective way for them to reduce CO2 emissions, just as it has been for the US. If you're an investor in US natural gas, you have a call option on just that type of policy shift. This has been true for several years. And then Russia invaded Ukraine. It's hard to overstate how fundamentally this has changed Europe's idea of energy security. In fact, I'd say the Western Europeans, like Germany, didn't even consider energy security. They were focused on plowing tens of billions of euros into wind power and leaving themselves vulnerable to Russia by relying on them for over half their natural gas. Germany never even built any LNG import facilities. Countries in Eastern Europe, like Poland, closer to Russia and therefore more wary, did at least have a sense of energy security and built their own LNG import capability. Russia's invasion has created an irreversible opportunity for US natural gas. You don't need to predict how the war in Ukraine will turn out to know that Europeans will never regard Russia in the same way when it comes to relying on them for coal, crude oil, and especially natural gas. In a few years, the original Nord Stream pipeline will be lying empty under the Baltic Sea alongside Nord Stream 2, which was never even placed into service. Germany is planning to build two LNG import terminals, something they should have done years ago. This will give them choices about who to buy from. Australia, Qatar, and the US are the three biggest exporters of LNG. So now you can add a newfound desire for energy security among the countries of Europe to the list of reasons why natural gas is an investment with plenty of possibilities for upside surprises. These contracts are typically for 20 years or more and are being priced as much as 75% higher than a year ago. Most analysts see a shortage of LNG given increasing world demand I think there's a growing acceptance among policymakers that the energy transition will take a long time. I think they're learning that people value reliability, security, and price. The White House has responded to rising gasoline prices by trying to increase domestic oil production. They definitely understand that the public doesn't want to hear that higher energy prices are inevitable if we try and move our fossil fuels too quickly. What that means is that more thoughtful policies are more likely. Environmental groups are beginning to rethink their opposition to nuclear power because you can't be against everything. Because natural gas can displace coal and generates less emissions, it's a step in the right direction, unless you're ideologically rigid. If you want to position for the world to shift to a cleaner energy mix, you'll want to invest in natural gas. If you want to position for Europe's recently discovered wish for energy security, you'll want to invest in natural gas. America has achieved energy independence. Although that's not possible for Europe, we are in a position to help them achieve energy security. And we can also help emerging economies meet their growing energy needs with less emissions than the path they're on right now. I think America has a lot to be proud of in our energy sector. If you read our blog regularly, I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't seen it yet, I hope this video will persuade you to take a look. We always love to hear from you. So if you have any comments or blog ideas, let me know. To find out more about what we're thinking, visit our website, sl-advisors.com. I'm Simon Lack with SL Advisors. Thank you for watching this video.